Good morning, Mr. McDonald. I want to take a moment here and review the lesson we had yesterday. When we take a look at your golf swing here, you know, I know in our discussions here we discussed about trying to get things, you know, without drastically doing a major overhaul or restarting from scratch with your golf swing. What we wanted to try to find is where you potentially lost the distance you had from previously before when you played. Now, taking that into consideration, one of the biggest things you said is you had broken your wrist last year. And as you broke your wrist, you start seeing slowly, slowly, slowly positioning of loss of distance, not quite hitting uh, the clubs the same distance or as far anymore, and or a loss of consistency. So what I want to review with you here is kind of going over everything in your swing, uh, kind of showing you what we can change, uh, what we can work on, uh, what we can kind of get you back on path to where you were, like you were playing before, uh, getting your distance back and helping you stay a little more consistent. So one of the first things I'm going to point out to you here that we weren't able to do as well out on the range yesterday uh, is right here, ball position. When we look right here at your ball position, I can tell that the ball is a little bit forward in your stance. So because of that, when the ball is forward in the stance, it will cause the body, as you go back here, and then you go to go forward, see how your body kind of lunged right here. This is one, one, one reason why. But as the ball is forward here, it creates more of a chopping move or a lunge down at it because we have to get our body going forward if we don't turn properly through the shot. Now, because of that, we can see a bow in the shaft as it comes down into it because that right hand is wanting to release the club. And essentially, right about there, you've released the club all the way. And when I say all the way, we can see it there because look at the club. The club is coming forward and bowing forward instead of bowing behind. As it bows behind, that means the energy is still loaded up in the shaft as you turn through, and then the shaft will then release into the ball. All right, so as we take a look at this, I'm sorry, I took a small break there to take care of my allergies, so... As we see this, we see the club coming down on a very steep approach because the ball being forward. Now, that being case, you know, where I'd like to see the ball at would probably be a little bit more in the middle of your stance here. So when we take a ruler here, one of the things I want to show you here, and this is something very easily that you can do at the house. Now, quite frankly, this isn't the most exact ruler that I like here, so we're going to turn that off and erase that. But... What I'd like to see you do at the house is very simple. Is I'd like to see you take a ruler, yardstick, etc., place it right out in front of your toe line. Then what I'd like for you to do here is at your left toe, your right toe, measure that distance. So if that distance, let's say, is 18 inches, What I want you to do then is to come nine inches from your right toe. Let's just say that's the middle right there. So if you were to notice that, what you will find here is if we say this is the middle of your stance, look how much forward that ball is in, the, in front of you. So causing you to kind of go forward, tilt the spine back. Great positioning is showing you tilting the spine back just a little bit to clear the club, clear the ball, clear the head through the shot. Okay. Now that being the case here, as we looked at things and as we did things here, the second, this first swing was very rushed, very quick uh, as you turned through it. Second swing, as you took it, took a shot at this, was a little bit smoother. Transition was not as quick. But one of the things you said, you, and you, you told me, and you still see the ball position being a little forward there, was that you, you lighten the grip pressure in this right hand. Now, by lighten the grip pressure in the right hand, we won't see as aggressive move. And you can see right there, just when I do it right there, it doesn't look as quick, doesn't look as um, 
as forced per se. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this just in a, in a real time kind of status here. So let's show you here. That transition right through there was, you know, not bad, but it was still a little rushed. But right here you can almost see when you do the second one, kind of a much better transition, much better position as you turn through. All right. So as we take a look at this, and one or two, we worked on two things. Now, I didn't talk about the ball position, but I think that is a position that I want you to pay close attention to. But what we talked about second was, one, your tempo, and two, as you take the golf club back, was essentially the length of your backswing. Because we can see right here the length of your backswing of how much higher that right elbow comes into play. Okay? Now, initially, when we just look at golfers here, and I'll show you Tom Watson. All right? Let me show you Tom. Tom comes back. Tom comes up. You know, this is where we got some similarities here. Okay? Comes up. Good position, right elbow's in a good position, you look good here. But as you climb all the way up to the top, look how far that right elbow comes back. Tom, look at the separation here. Not very far. You know, it's here. You know, when you compare that angle, a lot, a lot different angle here underneath that right elbow compared to what we see here. Now, what this does here, it opens you up for a different variable, different lengths, different times that as you take it back further, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as you take it back further, it kind of results you back to here. And this is kind of a reverse, can be a reverse uh, transition of your weight, but primarily watch your spine angle. Here, it gets even more tilted as you go back with that club. So ideally what I'd like you to do is as we turn back and as we get into a position here, I'd like to see where we're not going back as far. You know, this being our first approach here, to try to get, you know, a little more control. I'd like to see a little better position. I'd like to see almost right here than right here. You know, and just by doing that, that allows you to feel a little better transition. So as you come down, we're not going to be as aggressive with this chopping move or kind of like throwing the club off our shoulder here. And you can see dramatically way outside here and it almost kind of starts a release from the top of your swing. Now, by doing this, what we're trying to do is lessen this amount that the club comes out comes down, fully released, and then comes right across your body. You can kind of see how that club just goes, follows that path right across. Your body has to clear out of the way. Hopefully, what I'd like for you to do or be able to do is get back. You know, we're not going to change your swing dramatically, but what we're going to do is we're going to shorten the golf swing one and then work on your tempo initially in this lesson, trying to get this transition a little bit smoother, a little bit um, more within yourself, per se. So by getting more within yourself, it allows us to be a little more consistent time and time through. Now, this being the case, first thing I worked on with you here, and I just want to show you here, was the ball drill. Now, when we worked on the ball drill, it was just very simple, getting you to make a turn back, and it turned through. Now that was kind of the quick one second turn back and turn through. But right here, you turned up, and all I want you to do is to pause at the top, and turn down. Look at the difference right here in this move. This is the key point of the move that we want to do. Look how this right shoulder wants to turn down. Okay? And when I say down, I'm meaning down and under. Almost like that right elbow is coming down. And look at the difference here compared to here. All right. Two different positions where it looked like your right shoulder swung out and around. So 
So get a lifted up. Rather here is started here. Big difference. You kind of see like it swings down and around. And that's all I wanted you to kind of work on. Just feeling a good smooth transition down to where it wasn't the clut or the right shoulder coming out, but it was feeling like it was just swinging the ball down and out at the target. Two different positions. One allows your hands to stay a little more in front of you as you turn down and out. Or down and under rather than down and out like we see here on the right hand side. Two different transitions here. Much better. And especially look at the right elbow here. Big difference. Right elbow comes here, comes here. Comes here. And it comes through. Whereas here the right elbow starts here. Out, down, and around. Okay, so as you see, you notice how your hands finish out in front of you. And hopefully, yeah, right here. You'll see a difference of as you turn back here. And the biggest part I want you to pay close attention to, Jeff, is look where your hands finish through here compared to So kind of that right elbow comes down, comes through, and the hands come right across, right there. See how that left shoulder comes up? Hands come drastically across your body. Two different positions when you swing here. And all I told you to do is to turn back, turn up, let's get that stopping point, stay smooth, and just let the, club, or let the ball turn down and around the body. That's all I want you to do. 20 swings, two sets of 20 swings. We can do it. It's not the fact that, you know, can you do it. It's the fact of doing it. And this is all I want you to see here, Jeff, right there. Okay? Next position then. Getting you back into um, feeling the transition to the top of the swing. That was kind of a useless picture. Sorry about that. But just kind of feeling the position up to the top. Stop. A little long. This one is longer than what we see here. But what we definitely do not see the difference of is look how much straighter the back is compared to here. All right. This is what we're shooting for on the left-hand side. I see there's a little more, and that's what we're hoping to get out of. All right, so what I want you to do, the second part of what I want you to do in your golf swing is right here. Swing up, then ultimately swing back down. Don't, none of this extra, but literally stop, swing down. Okay, keeping that same pass, same position, time after time, just like you're doing with the ball drill. But swing it down and out in front of you. Okay. So nice, smooth swings in the backyard, but trying to keep that tempo a little bit smoother and a little transition so that next time when we work on things, we are going to work on trying to get a little bit of that right elbow down instead of that, or more so that right shoulder coming down rather than out and across. Okay, if you have any questions here, Jeff, by all means, shoot me an email, stop by the shop, and if, if, even if it's just a two-minute question. By all means, let me know. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. contact me. Let me know. Michael Wyatt Golf at gmail dot com or three one four seven two four six five three nine. Thank you, sir. Hello, I'm 
My name is Michael White. I just want to go over today a uh, small drill we talked about today, which was the ball drill. Today I'm going to improvise and use, you know, for those people that do not have a ball, we're going to use a head cover. Now initially by using this, you can emphasize if you have a beach ball, a playground ball, or any type of basketball or even soccer ball to use this, but initially what we're going to try to do is by using a ball, what we're going to emphasize instead of using the golf club. Not all of us can swing the golf club in the house, but what we can do is we can swing a ball in the house. Now by using this, what we're going to try and hopefully cure or hopefully get a emphasis on is one, we're going to either, we're going to see that by doing the proper ball drill, we're going to turn properly back and through and or it's going to help us feel getting the hands back in the right position. Now what it's going to look like is just like this. What I essentially want you to do is I want you to step forward, and this is kind of a heads-on view here, just hold the ball with both palms touching one another, and all I want you to do is to turn back, almost act like you're handing the ball to someone behind you, and then all we're going to do is we're going to turn up to the top, about shoulder high to head high. Now from here, what you'll find here Initially, I want you to feel, if we think about gravity, the ball is just going to fall to the ground. So essentially, we're just going to let the ball fall to the ground, which allows our right elbow come to the side. We're going to turn through. We're going to hit the bottom part of our left side of our body, almost like we're reaching forward to shake or hand the ball to the person in front of us, and then come back up to the left-hand side. Some people have told me this looks kind of like a U, but in some cases, if you look like it, that's essentially making a U here, bottom part of the U, bottom part of the U, and then the top part of the U. What initially it'll look like from the back side is something like this. As we turn down the line, we're handing that ball back here, and then we're turning up. You can see how it's just a natural move where we're keeping the hands in front of us, but we're holding on to this ball. In this case, it's the head cover. But as we let the ball come down, here's the ball falling back down, through, down the line, and then back up. Now as you do this, we're going to do the same type of reps. We're going to do two sets of 20 reps, each time doing it slow. We're not trying to go back and forth really quick, learning nothing, but initially what we're trying to do is to take it nice and slow, making sure that we're making that U or following those points. If you have any questions, as always, let me know or give me a call at the store. Thank you.